Okay, this is going to be about how the U.S. became the world reserve currency and the petrodollar. So, if you'll remember, uh, this is Andrew Jackson, and he basically threw out the international bankers. Uh, that was his pride, proudest accomplishments, and they spent uh, the better part of a hundred years trying to get back in. Well, they got back in under this goofball, the first progressive Democrat president, Woodrow Wilson. And uh, towards the end of his life, he uh, said, my God, I've destroyed my country. Well, it was a little bit late then, Woodrow. So he signed in the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Now, uh, the deal was, was passed into law while Congress was out on a uh, it was Christmas Day, and uh, the the thing was actually the the deal was actually uh, sealed by a guy named Schiff, who was an agent of the Rothschilds on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. So if you ever get a chance to read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, uh, that'll fill in some gaps for you here. I uh, don't want to go into too much here. I got to keep it short and sweet. So uh, we went on from 1913. So. Uh, we signed over to the international bankers because remember the Federal Reserve isn't owned by the U.S. It's owned by international bankers headed by the Rothschild family, which was one of the 13 families that basically rule the world. You call them Illuminati or you call them whatever you want. So everything went along pretty decent till uh, we had the, the Great Depression. Banks failed. Uh, and then this dumbass becomes president. Uh, the reason I, I put this little uh, for lasting peace security for all even though he encouraged Japan to strike so we could get into World War II uh, he made it illegal to own gold and you had to sell your gold to the federal government for $20 an ounce and that's how they filled up Fort Knox uh, as soon as so they paid everybody $20 an ounce for gold and as soon as they locked the doors they upped it to $32 an ounce by manipulating the price because they had and that was the biggest gold depository in the world by far at the time. So a thing called the Exchange Stability Fund was uh, initially had $12 billion in it, and it was to maintain economic stability at, at the time. That's all it did uh, through the, the Great Depression. Now, towards the end of World War II, there was a thing called the Bretton Woods Agreement, and uh, England was... The, the pound sterling was basically the world reserve currency at the time, or the nearest thing to it. And since uh, Britain and the United States are, or were at the time, basically the same country, that's why uh, he forced our hand in World War II by letting the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor, a false flag. It wasn't false. They, they really did obviously attack, but uh, he goaded them into it and uh, let the... Uh, let a lot of those sailors die for no reason that could have been a you know they were left there to die for a reason and uh, so the agreement on Bretton Woods was uh, okay U.S. you'll be the reserve currency or the at the time the lone uh, power were the atom bomb you're the, you're the greatest army in the history of mankind you're a great economic power just don't print up too much money and at the time you could exchange uh dollars for silver or, and or gold it depends on at the time well then let's fast forward up to this jerk LBJ and uh, you know they killed Kennedy uh, I've gone into that one of the reasons to kill Kennedy was because he was going to audit the Federal Reserve which never did after that happened so this dumbass starts the, the Great Society which was a, the big welfare state that was the start of it was under him and then he escalated Vietnam. Well, the French were the ones that initially called us on this because they noticed, they said, well, we want to exchange our stuff in uh, for, for real tangible assets, silver and gold. And so Nixon, uh, you can watch this on the internet, uh, just punch in, uh, Nixon takes us off the gold standard. So in 1971, you can listen to the speech. He uh, took us off the gold standard. We went on to a true fiat currency. Now there's still gold in Fort Knox. Uh, but uh, the printing really became crazy after at this point. 
Uh, but Tricky Dicky had some had some uh, had some stuff up his sleeve, so he sends uh, our mighty fine Illuminati foot soldier uh, Kissinger to all the little uh, in, in this period of time here. Uh, he sends Kissinger to the Middle East uh, and starts setting up a thing called the Petrodollar. Well, a little known fact, there was this uh, giant oil reserve called Gull Island that was found. And it's, it's, uh, it's at the north part of Alaska. It's hardly known about. It's different from the North Slope. Uh, but this was after the uh, oil embargo and the... And, uh, the Saudis, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Iran, they were all worried because we'd cut back on our driving and they were losing money. And then they found out about Gull Island and uh, they said, well, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> well, so Kissinger cut this deal. He said, we'll keep the Gull Island reserves off the market. And you can, you know, pump up the price for the for oil, and uh, you just have to promise to spend 10% of what you your profits buying treasury bills. So we were exporting inflation to all these uh, uh, countries over there, and so that goes on pretty well and good. And uh, you know, of course, uh, we had the uh, uh, Bill Clinton took us off of the. Glass-Steagall Act, and then there was the, the great uh, worldwide sell-off 2007 and 8, and then uh, Donald Trump comes into office. Well, he opens the tap on the oil, and the oil starts to flow, and as of right now, Texas is just behind, just Texas alone is basically tied with Iran and Iraq in oil production, it's, uh, probably within a month and a half for sure will be number three, just Texas by itself behind Saudi Arabia and Russia is the world's biggest uh, producer of oil. So uh, let's go over some some things here. So Gull Island, uh, Times Man of the Year uh, back in the 40s was a man named Mossadegh and he was the head of, uh, head of Iran. And the first CIA uh, coup was led by Shockingly enough, uh, FDR's cousin Kermit Roosevelt. He's one that he worked for the CIA, and they destabilized Mossadegh because he kicked out British Petroleum. So, uh, let's go back to this economic stability fund. So, the be-all and end-all of everything is called the Bank of International Settlements, and it's run by the Rothschilds. And you know they're all tied up: the military-industrial complex, the international bankers. They're all tied up together. Now, I'd like to give you a little bit of a homework here. Planet Petroleum by Tex Mars, Diary of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins, and then there's a, a classic book called The Energy Non-Crisis. It's actually in its sixth edition, and it was by a man that was a pastor for the uh, Alaskan Pipeline. And he did such a good job of helping uh, work productivity, they made him a... Uh, uh, a board member so he was privy to a lot of stuff and then he was a whistleblower now I'm going to talk a little bit about oil so here's you know you, you were probably brought up in school telling you that uh, oil comes from dinosaurs well I'm going to bring this uh, little thing up here and it's talking about the myth of fossil oils and they even brought this their version of Sinclair here. So there was a thing called Hubbard's Peak, and it was thought that uh, oil production peaked in 1972, which we've blown that off the doors by a bunch. And uh, the uh, peak oil, uh, there was a uh, there was a uh, no, oh, how should I say this? The, every time they, they would say the world reserves are a certain amount, within five years, it's doubled. 
and uh, the truth is that not all oil is from dead animals. There are some, but a lot of it is naturally occurring in the crust and it renews itself. If you go into uh, fields that were closed off for 50 years, they start refilling. Now they do it real slow. Uh, and the Russians figured out uh, see, the shallow oil is the one most of us, most of the countries discovered up until uh, the Russians. So the Russians figured out, and, and they go down, you know, 30,000 feet and find deep oil. Well, if you look at any model of the Earth, uh, they'll tell you the middle of, of Central Asia has never, has basically been above ground the whole time. It was never subducted, according to pretty much any model you look at. And... Uh, so they, uh, uh, so they, there's no way dinosaurs or dead animals got down that deep. So there's naturally occurring oil. Uh, Rockefeller back when he owned Standard Oil and was basically the richest person in history, uh, he had oil declared a fossil fuel. To drive up you know this make it sound more scarce that there's a limited amount well the truth is it's basically unlimited for all intents and purposes and uh that's what's propping up the u.s economy now so uh the petrodollar uh there's so much oil the u.s will probably become the world's largest producer of oil by 2021 uh the real thing that's holding up uh there's, there's really three formations in Texas. There's the Eagle Ford, there's the Permian Basin, and there's a sub-formation out there called the Wolf. And uh, they just, they could be producing another 40% if they had enough uh, uh, pumps. They just need to get the infrastructure there. So uh, that's how the Petro, that's what's holding up the, the dollar is nuclear weapons, uh, our control of international exchange courtesy of exchange stability fund which now basically has unlimited money by the way they were the ones that bought up all the uh, uh, treasury bills back when uh, fed was clean off their thing uh, their balance sheet okay that's all i got thank you bye